Hello fellow woodworkers, welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop and in this week's video we're going to be taking this pile of CLS timber and turning it into the frame for my new workbench. Roll the intro. So I wanted everything on this project to be absolutely top quality so I really took my time, didn't jump any stages. The first thing I wanted to do is make sure all the cuts were precise so I just set up a very simple stop block uh, and then I could get the studwork timber and start um, to cut the legs the right length which they pretty much uh, were. Um, I then glued them up, clamped them up. Um, I did do a very light um, sanding in between just to give a bit of sort of key really for the glue to stick to but they stack really well uh, stuck really well the tight bond uh, got them really really good um, <clears throat> and this this was the point where I had the disaster with my table saw which um, I will explain to you now okay so fellow woodworkers you would have just seen in the uh, footage that my uh, rage 5s table saw has just blown its motor uh, cutting through those pieces of timber and I know what's going to happen in the comments there'll be people saying oh it's against the grain and there's too much wood to cut but I have cut joined um, CLS stud timber in exactly the same way you just saw me do it I've probably done it half a dozen times with that table saw and never had an issue I mean my table saw is a few years old now and it has had quite a lot of use and I think that potentially might just be what's given up the ghost but <clears throat> it is completely dead uh, having had a look at it the motor I think is just completely burnt out it's completely gone now Rage do sell spares for their uh, machines but I have just given them a call unfortunately it's Friday and it's gone five o'clock now so they're closed but I will call them on Monday to just see if it is possible to get a spare um, engine assembly having looked on their website you can buy one but obviously this is going to be a massive expense and these table saws now are a lot more expensive when I, than when I bought them I think they're retailing at the moment for about £350 brand new and I, when I bought mine it was only about £299 I think um, so that is quite a lot of money and obviously I haven't got the money at the moment to outlay on another table saw so I essentially am going to try and finish this project uh, without it which is going to be quite difficult because there's quite a lot of uh, small cuts but I have got my uh, Parkside plunge saw uh, which I'm going to have to use to finish everything off so a bit of a blow um, I'll give Evolution, Evolution a call on Monday and, and see where we get to but yeah a bit of a blow to lose such an expensive uh, piece of, of kit and you know had it been the first time I'd done that and I'd made that sort of mistake then I would have got it but literally the only reason I was confident making that cut is as I said I've made that cut four five six times before I've made that exact same cut on even going against the grain uh, on that table saw and it's never been a problem before but perhaps this was just one cut too many so I'll give you an update when I've had a call but let's get on with the project the one positive thing if there is one is that it gave me the opportunity uh, to use and even watching this back when I was making the video I probably was trying to cut too much in one go here with my um, parkside plunge saw but to be fair it, as you can see it went through it um, when I'd done that I started to um, cut all of the braces and the internal uh, parts that would join the legs together I'd spent quite a long time um, designing this I actually did it in SketchUp um, to make sure I got all the measurements exactly the right size and make sure that I got everything in exactly the right place and then I just really really took my time even making the cuts I'm doing it slower on the miter saw than normal because I'm trying to avoid any sort of unnecessary tear out um, and when I put it together <clears throat> as you can see there there's an overhang I did that deliberately 
I left that overhang there uh, because I want to make sure that I've got sort of more area inside to attach the wood to, which you'll see later. And the reason for just marking that is A, so I can get the pocket holes in the right place, and uh, B, make sure that they're lined up on both the top and bottom. <clears throat> then I just broke out the pocket hole jig, which you'll see a lot in these um, videos because there was a lot of pocket holes. <clears throat> I chose pocket holes deliberately because I didn't want any external uh, screws on the outside and I actually think pocket holes have got a really bad reputation where you know it's quite undeserved they're really really good at the job they do but they're not there's something that they're not and if you know what you're wanting them for and you use them that way then they work really well the only thing I will say is I did decide after this off camera that um, these pocket hole screws were too small I think these are 38 uh, mill <clears throat> so I actually changed them out for bigger ones the other thing I did was I put these blocks on and you'll see this throughout the film just to make sure I got the exact angles correct and that everything is butted up uh, the way it should be and one other thing that I noticed uh, during this is I don't have enough clamps um, I know I've got clamps don't get me wrong but I could probably have done with at least half a dozen of these these blue sort of F clamps that you can see there so it was literally just a case then of going back uh, putting pocket holes in each of them to make sure um, that they were seated in the right place and then attaching them together so after that I put the two together and what I did was mark a sort of section where I could put sort of two rail guides that are going to hold a center board in place this is me cutting them out these didn't have to be anything uh, special to be honest with you they were just some guides um, that I will stick on and you'll see in a minute and I just used a little bit of 12 mil uh, plywood there as a sort of template and that was for the panel that's going to slide in uh, later in the build. Um, I then got out my uh, Parkside multi-tool and I just cut a little groove, you can just see it there in the picture, I cut a little groove on each one just so when they go in and they butt up against the other um, strut they don't sort of clash with each other. It was only a, a tiny little block and you can see here, I'm now marking on the points where the cross braces um, are gonna go in and you'll see a bit more on that in a minute. Again, then it's just a case of hooking everything uh, together with the pocket screws and as you can see, it was really, really uh, coming together at this point. Again, there's me putting in the pocket screws. As I said, I did change those because I just felt they were a bit too small um, and when they were screwing into the legs in particular, I had a lot of space, I had a lot of area to screw into. I didn't need to use such small pocket hole screws. So I just popped them all out and popped the new ones in. I actually found that this was quite um, problematic working on um, this. this. As you can see, I've got very little clearance between the top of the garage door. I then got out my angle measurer um, because I wanted my uh, tape measure, digital tape measure. I wanted to get this one exactly right and I didn't just want to rely on using a tape measure though to be fair the measurement I got with the tape measure was on 100.2 so it was only you know 0.1 of a mil out <clears throat> I then attached these cross braces and this is to stop you know this is to give it rigidity to stop it sort of moving either way and as you can see I've got two bits of wood there and they're parallel to the other side so I know that those two braces are in the right place and then of course I started to use clamps uh, to get them level this one was a very tight fit actually i had to bash it in a bit and then this because you can see this is the bottom this is the only place this and the top where i actually put a screw in from the top or from the bottom just one single screw it's quite a long screw just to give it a bit of rigidity really <clears throat> the next thing i went on to do was to make the um I, i'm not going to call them a stretcher but in my mind uh, they are and these are just literally to put inside to put the drawer slides on which you'll see in a minute uh, the next thing that I did was I drew around uh, two pieces of the subwork timber to give me a sort of foot uh, and then I just took them out of that same piece of scrap um, plywood and I made the, the a mistake last time I did a workbench of not putting feet and just screwing the caster straight into the wood but to be honest with you, it really didn't work. I never felt it was very safe. So this time I just put a little uh, paddle in. I just put a little brad nail in. Then I drilled, pre-drilled and screwed uh, the hole um, ready for the uh, cast that go on top. So each of these feet is attached by two 
sort of two inch screws i would think they're quite they're quite deep um but i didn't want them going anywhere and obviously when the casters go into them i use fairly deep screws i was going to originally use sort of hex bolts but i decided um against that. i just didn't like the thought of doing it i then marked out um and pre-drilled all of the screw holes for the casters um i think i said this in the video each of these um casters is rated for 40 kilograms so even at an aggregate you know you're going to get 100 safely 100 kilograms off that and i'm not expecting the bench to be that big which is one of the reasons why i've used plywood as the top here goes hopefully i can lift it thankfully i did um and i was actually really pleased at how light it was and and how maneuverable it was which is exactly what I was after. So stage one of the build complete. Okay fellow woodworkers, so as you can see uh, stage one of the project uh, is complete. I've now got the frame with the heavy duty casters. Uh, each of those casters that's on the bottom, if I can find them, I, they're older, I'll put a link in the description, but each of those casters, I think if I'm right in saying, I think had a capacity of 40 uh, kilograms. So they should be more than good enough uh, for what I need them to do. I'm really pleased with how um, the build has turned out for this stage. It's exactly as I wanted it to be. Uh, everything is absolutely in line. It's really plumb, it's level, and I'm really liking uh, the size. As you'll know, I've reduced the size of my old workbench by making it shorter but wider. And one of the biggest issues I had with my other workbench is the fact that, what, yes, it was long, which was great, but it just wasn't very wide and actually for a lot of the projects I do having a wider workbench is better than having uh, a longer one so I have got an extension plan uh, on how I can uh, put in an extra thing like I've got on there with my uh, fold up um, sort of second part of the table I've got a similar plan to this but it's not going to be the same fold up because as you can see I've got two gaps here at the front these are going to be filled with woodworking drawers uh, to put a lot of stuff in and at the back here um, I'm going to use these to put to store some of my uh, DeWalt cases which is why I've left uh, a gap that big so overall really really uh, pleased with how it's turned out it's only the first stage um, this is probably going to be two possibly even three uh, videos but obviously this is the first part so the next stage is to uh, line the inside get the boards in put in the drawer runners and then we can start building the boxes for the drawers if this is your first time at the garage workshop thank you so much for joining me please can I ask you to subscribe like and comment if you are a regular viewer thank you once again for watching the video I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful please can I also ask you to like and comment I'll see you on the next edition of the garage workshop Take care fellow woodworkers.